वेलकम बैक व्यूअर्स जज शैडविक यू आर द रिपब्लिकन यस सर एंड प्लीज टेल मी हाउ फार द पार्टी एफिलिएशन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टूवर्ड्स द सक्सेस ऑफ एनी कैंडिडेट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन It's a big topic right now. It kind of mm -hmm. goes along with the mm -hmm. election of candidates. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's a lot of different levels to that answer. Mm -hmm. If people are going to elect us, and it seems like in Texas that's how it's going to be. It's been that way for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've always felt <clears throat> that if you're going to elect candidates, you may as well know what party they affiliate with. Uh, there's going to be 67 judges on the ballot this, mm -hmm. this November. And if you don't, and it's sort of hard to get to know all of them. Most of the judges don't know all of us. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought it's fair to at least know what party we claim to be with. Mm -hmm. Now, um, does it make a difference whether you're a Republican or a Democrat when I'm making a ruling on, a, on an evidence question in court? No. No. Probably not. No. But uh, there are times where there are questions about how the... So is it, is it mandatory <coughs> to, to, to have a party ticket for becoming a judge? Uh, it is because that's how we want to run our elections. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat. You can mm -hmm. be a Libertarian, a Green Party, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But you have to run with some party backing. And um, uh, but but to the point of judges, the lower the trial level court, the the least it probably matters. There are times when your political affiliation mm -hmm. might come up because you have a philosophical idea of the way that the legislature intended a, a particular law to be. Mm -hmm. And a Republican and a Democrat might have a different interpretation mm -hmm. of the law. Mm -hmm. Now as you go up higher, the mm -hmm. Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court, political affiliation makes much more difference because they get to interpret the law however they want. I have to follow the Court of Appeals. <laughs> and so uh, it becomes more important what philosophical bent you have the higher up in the court. Mr. Khan, do you think uh, a judge should be, uh, uh, should have affiliation with a party? Well, there's a both two answer for that. <laughs> Personally, myself, I do not like that. Judge like should be, be, you know, judge should be independent, right, judge should be partisan. unbiased, right. fair, right. balanced, you know. They should make decision for, for best uh, you know, qualifications yeah. and all those things. And, mm -hmm. and if they're hearing the case, just like just say, mm -hmm. when you're delivering messages, mm -hmm. he don't care about if they are Democrat or Republican. He's looking the evidence mm -hmm. and he's making his decision. But in reference to about running as a candidate, I don't know about which system we have in Texas, how we can run, how the judge can run without affiliations of any party. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. but. Myself, I like to see judge be bipartisan, like in school board elections, mm -hmm. multi district elections, they're bipartisan. Mm -hmm. But problem with this, when the bipartisan, in the bottom of the ticket, they don't care, nobody vote for them. Mm -hmm. And that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the school district they face, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yet people don't come out to vote for them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shmuri, what do you think? Is a party affiliation mm -hmm. is, is good thing or not for a judge? Well, if we're going to have uh, uh, elections by the people, it uh, uh, may not necessarily always be a good thing for the reasons uh, uh, already stated, mm -hmm. but it's probably a necessary thing if you're going to have election by the people. Mm -hmm. uh, the important thing for me uh, is uh, not necessarily Republican or Democrat, uh, but uh, making sure that judges understand and appreciate what their constitutionally delegated role is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. here in our system of government, uh, judges are not lawmakers. Uh, yeah. Judges are there to interpret the law and to apply the law in the Constitution and not to create law. And that's why Judge Shadwick mentioned that it probably doesn't make a huge difference for a trial judge whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. We don't have a Republican hearsay rule and a Democrat hearsay rule. We have the law. Uh, and the facts, mm -hmm. and it really doesn't uh, matter what political party that you're in. Uh, so the important thing uh, for me, uh, in summary, Mr. Hashmi, is uh, um, to make sure that judges understand what their role is, not to create right. law, but to apply the law. I always uh, ask this question, that to become a good and effective judge, do you need to be a good lawyer also? Uh, what an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, fact is, I'm not sure if it was mm -hmm. important to be a good lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to say that I was a good lawyer. You were. But, but it, I think it's important to have practiced law for a significant period of time. Uh, you can be a trial court judge if you've only been a lawyer for five years. Mm -hmm. 
But five years is just not enough, I don't think, to have seen all of the things and to have gained all of the experience that mm -hmm. it takes to be a better judge. You would want your judge to be somebody who is very experienced, who has seen a variety of things and has had to deal with a lot of variety of experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those would be more helpful if you were a good lawyer than if you were a bad lawyer. Mm -hmm. But even a bad lawyer has had a lot of experiences, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, and I, I think that's very important. But, but, but you'd have to definitely say that having been a good lawyer is better than having been a bad lawyer <laughs> when it comes to benefiting from your life experiences and bringing them to the bench. Now, the, the most important thing you have to be as a judge is fair. Yeah. Um, you also have to be intelligent, and mm -hmm. third, you have to have an appropriate temperament. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it's easy for people who get on the judge to start to think more of themselves, perhaps, than everybody else does, you know, to get a big ego. And uh, that's, not, that's not what's important. What's important is to provide a fair did, and when, equal forum for people when they bring their case to court. When did you know that you have the temperament of becoming a judge? Oh. When did you know? At, at what age? <laughs> Uh, this is this is gonna, gonna sound funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I have felt like I was going to be a judge since I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I have always thought uh, I uh, officiated sports all through junior you had high. A you had a college. dream, or you you. I I just have that role of, of the, we call it we call it calling balls and strikes. I'm the mm -hmm. umpire in the baseball game. I did that <laughs> in college, law school, high school. Mm -hmm. It's 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 just the role. Now I practiced law for 29 years before I got on the bench, mm -hmm. but. I, I feel that temperamentally I'm well suited for the position of the person in the middle who makes the, who makes the calls. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I honestly have felt that about myself as long as I can remember. But I waited mm -hmm. to become a judge mm -hmm. even though I felt that way because I wanted to be an experienced judge mm -hmm. and so I waited. Uh, Mr. Shimoni, uh, sorry, you want to say something? The judge, uh, that's the reason the uh, governor appoints you, right? Uh, because you know that you have a desire to be a judge. I think so. And let me ask you one question. Uh, when you are uh, run, when uh, he appoints you first time as a judge, did it was a surprise for you, or you uh, you already know that you have appointment coming? No, it was a surprise. I knew that I had applied, I but I did not know if I was in line, if I was next in line, if I was one hundredth in line. I, I I didn't know, and I knew that there were a lot of other good people who applied. And so had uh, you had you some connections with him? Well, um, I had met him. Met him. Uh, I don't think he mm -hmm. could pick me out of a a group of people on the street. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I needed political collection, mm -hmm. connections or to have played politics to have gotten appointed. Mm -hmm. I like to think, and I believe it's true, that I was appointed based on my, my resume, my qualifications, and, the, and some recommendations I got. You have to have people recommend you yeah. just, to, just to get in front of the governor. Right. Uh, Mr. Shimodi, uh, have you ever thought of becoming a judge before that at any mm -hmm. age, certain <coughs> age? Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I, certainly not in high school. I can't say that I, I thought of becoming a judge in high school, but uh, certainly in my uh, mid to late 20s. And how did you prepare yourself to become a judge from high school? How? Um, well, I have an extensive uh, business and financial background. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. this is probably where I started thinking about how it would be a good fit for me. Uh, I have uh, an extensive background in crisis management and problem solving, and really we have to yeah, do a crisis lot of management. that. Yes. The, right. Uh, mm -hmm. Judges are, are required to mm -hmm. be problem solvers mm -hmm. um, and to be crisis managers. Uh, I uh, spent uh, nearly seven years uh, mm -hmm. working with financial institutions around the country, many of which were in a state of crisis, mm -hmm. and uh, helped to turn them around so that they could become effective and efficient organizations. Uh, I think this is not only relevant from the standpoint of what a judge does as a problem solver, but having a, a strong business and financial background, I think, is key uh, to uh, what a family court judge does, because a lot of the most complex issues that arise in family courts have to deal with quantification, mm -hmm. uh, characterization, and division of assets and liabilities. So having a judge that has a business background, uh, understands how to read a complex tax return, uh, knows how to uh, assess a business evaluation, I think are valuable mm -hmm. experiences. So, so on what issue, on what trait or characteristic, your characteristics, your, per, I mean, personality characteristics, personality trait, you are uh, focusing on the uh, campaign, on what characteristics? How do you present yourself to the public? Why people should vote you? 
One of the things, uh, that's an excellent question, one of the things that I'm uh, really focusing on is efficiency. Um, uh, we uh, live in the third largest county uh, mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, our In family, the country, it's third largest? Yeah. Right, and uh, mm -hmm. our family court system uh, mm -hmm. is becoming increasingly crowded. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, it's becoming a particular problem in the 247th District Court, which is a court I'm running for. Uh, it's taking almost uh, three months in many cases to get a temporary orders hearing on custody cases and divorce cases. Uh, and that's very problematic in light of the fact that temporary restraining orders expire after 14 days. So we have this, you can renew it for an additional 14 days, but you have this awkward period when a temporary restraining order expires and when you can get into court on a temporary orders hearing in a custody case or a divorce case. Mm -hmm. uh, so efficiency is extremely important and uh, my goal is to cut in half the amount of time that it takes uh, for parties to get into court on a temporary orders hearing when you have a divorce or a custody case. So uh, in answer to your question, uh, really mm -hmm. the central theme that I've been focusing on is efficiency. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Khan, you uh, I have seen you so many times in the community and you have a key role in, in activating and galvanizing the community politically you know, and you, you are doing the same thing in this election too. How do you see the reaction and response of the Pakistani community this time? Well, Pakistan community, they like to be get more informed. They like to know about the candidate more. Mm -hmm. We we not like to be like some other communities. They just go straight Democrat, straight Republican. Mm -hmm. Our people are more educated. Yes. I mean, we have doctors, engineers. Our, we are very backbone for economic development uh, for the city of Houston. So, our you know people are they always call me or you know those my good friends. Hey, Mr. Khan, who you think is a good judge? Who's a good person mm -hmm. running this and that? And I have to tell them both sides of the qualification. Look, this guy is this qualification, this guy this qualification, this guy had been sitting that long in office and he had been doing good job or bad job. So I give them my recommendation, mm -hmm. whatever possible. Mm -hmm. But thing is that our, uh, those candidates, just like uh, judges, they are here. To re uh, view, uh, I mean, our, our uh, you know, listener they are viewing right now and they can pay their attention, they can listen, they can understand why they are running. What did they say, you know, why they, why they mm -hmm. should they vote for them? Mm -hmm. And that's a very important thing. And, and I like to see that continuously our community people to get more engaged in mainstream politics. Mm -hmm. They try to understand more about any elected official, why, they, why those elected officials need their vote. Mm -hmm. This is very smart by you. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, are a lot, there are a number of communities all around the country, particularly in Harris County, who always vote all Democrat or all Republican. And what mm -hmm. happens is that over time they get taken for granted. Like, we have their votes, let's go talk to somebody else. Mm -hmm. The Pakistani community is obviously very vibrant and growing in Houston. And the best way to stay vibrant and growing and to get and to uh, <clears throat> increase its level of, of importance and profile is to, is to seek out and uh, vote for both Republicans and Democrats. Uh, you'll never be taken for granted. You'll mm -hmm. always have candidates over here mm -hmm. uh, asking for your votes and saying, how can we get you more engaged in government? How can we make you feel more a part of what we're doing? I think you're smart. And that, that's Republican. actually a reason that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, our community, you know, our population community and registered <coughs> voters, we are actually almost in Harris County or city of Houston, we are voting four to five person voting, they come out to vote. Mm -hmm. And four or five person votes, they can make a decision for any candidate. But mostly uh, right now, the candidate they are winning in Harris County, county wide race, one or two point. Some uh, people get 49%, they get 50%, uh, but they do not have 50.1, 50.01. So, you know, like one, even one vote count, I can give you some examples. And, and what do you expect? I mean, uh, uh, what would be the turnout ratio this time? Uh, for a South Asian community, I think we're going to be coming out 6%. 6% or more. In both counties or only Harris County? Harris County. Harris when County. I'm talking about, I usually okay. talk about Harris okay. County. Right, right. But that's why I do mostly research. Okay. <laughs> Harris County, Harris County. Uh, Mr. We are the largest county in the, in the, in the USA, right? Mr. Shmoudi, there's, there's another, I mean, it's a, to me, it's an interesting question that if uh, there is a list of five candidates, both candidate, uh, I mean uh, Republican or uh, Democrats, and all the candidates are equally good, 
equally fair they have integrity they are balanced unbiased qualified they are on merit a voter like me how should i decide how will i how, how can i decide to vote for that particular person what should be the criteria well i think there are uh, certain uh, characteristics that uh, you would look for in a judge that you may not necessarily look for in say a gubernatorial candidate or a, a, a legislative candidate. So mm -hmm. uh, as applied to uh, Judge Shadwick's race and my race, uh, I think the, the qualities and the characteristics are gonna be quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think uh, it's extremely important to, as Judge Shadwick mentioned, to take a look at experience. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, not only experience as, as, uh, in practicing law, mm -hmm. how long you've been in the legal profession, but be open-minded and look at life experience as well. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, I believe having a strong business and financial background is directly relevant to a civil district mm -hmm. court bench or a family mm -hmm. district court bench. So you want to look at qualifications, you want to look at experience, you want to look at temperament. And you can't always tell that on a campaign trail, but uh, <laughs> it's something that is uh, extremely critical uh, when it comes to electing uh, a judge. You want to see someone uh, who's compassionate. Uh, someone who has a record of service, I think, is extremely important. Um, these are uh, our qualities that are going to be indicative of a fair judge, an impartial yeah, judge. Yeah. So there are other also qualities. This is a time to take a break. All right. <laughs> so viewers, stay with us. We'll take a break and we'll come back.